Firstly, I would like to thank and Yao providing me this opportunity. Uh, this presentation is about our research work on data centers with heat for building space heating. Uh, before diving into technical details, I would like to outline uh, some outcomes of this work. So this work can achieve uh, complete waste heat recovery. Importantly, there is no need for heat pumps, which are commonly used. Therefore, uh, investment and uh, carbon emissions are minimum with payback time less than one year. Uh, so our aim is to, it's very short, this uh, uh, payback time. Uh, our aim is to achieve uh, low in investment for practical uh, applications. Uh, we'll see. Uh, let me start with uh, background information. Uh, the exponential growth uh, in internet has led to a dramatic increase in data centers energy use and uh, carbon emission. Uh, the left graph uh, from IEA uh, showed that in 2020, the emission was comparable to the world's airline industry with very high uh, projected uh, growth rate. Uh, the emission must be cut. Um, <clears throat> the right graph illustrates three primary uh, carbon reduction methods, and the waste heat reuse is one of them that particularly promising due to the IT, um, due to the nature of IT system, cause over 90% of the energy consumed by IT is converted into heat. And at the same time, IT requires cooling for function. One of our studies indicate that in theory, over 97% of this heat can be utilized. Uh, the potential is huge. Um, however, uh, practical applications are limited uh, due to uh, various uh, challenges. For example, uh, the waste heat is low-grade heat that is not easily to be applied to traditional uh, thermodynamic processes. Uh, nevertheless, there are few applications uh, targeting digital heating network mainly in Finland and Sweden. There are compelling reasons because both buildings and data centers are significant contributors to carbon emissions. Reusing waste heat from data center in digital heating can significantly reduce carbon uh, emissions for both sectors. It's like uh, sector coupling. For example, uh, Finland aims at car carbon neutrality by 2035. Uh, very soon, the world's first carbon neutral welfare society. So the country is under big pressure. Uh, fortunately, uh, our digital heating uh, network are very advanced, exceeding 90% adoption rate in big cities. Uh, therefore, many IT companies so you can you just uh, utilize this utilize heat to digital heating. Um, small uh, data center companies advise to use this heat in near, uh, to heat nearby buildings. There are many uh, uh, large scale applications, for example, already. Sorry, Professor Zulu, just a second. I think it's a song. Um, Rick, how to unmute somehow. Can you unmute yourself, please? Sorry, couldn't hear you. Probably how to unmute yourself. Mm 
sorry. Yeah, it's okay now. Thank you. Sorry, uh, should I? Is it I? Uh, how is it possible? Is I me? So should I start yeah. from beginning? No, it's a, only last uh, a minute or so. Uh, the it's last, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. No, it's okay. Yeah, All right. it's okay. No, thank you. Okay. So, uh, yes, no, 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 sorry. Uh, so, um, Finland aimed at uh, carbon neutrality by 2035, uh, the world's first carbon neutral uh, welfare society. Uh, it's very soon. So, the country faces big pressure. Uh, fortunately, uh, our digital heating uh, network are very advanced, exceeding 90% adoption rates in big cities. Uh, therefore, many IT companies utilize this heat to district heating network. Uh, small data centers are advised to utilize this heat to heat nearby buildings. Uh, there are already man, la, many large-scale applications, uh, for example, already in 2010, uh, two Helsinki, Helsinki company uh, established a two megawatt data center in underground bomb shelter. Uh, it's this heat can heat 1,500 apartments now. In 2019, uh, IT company Talia built the Nordic country's largest co-location data center in Helsinki. Uh, starting from 2022, uh, energy company Helen has utilized its this heat to heat over 20,000 dwellings now. Uh, currently, uh, Microsoft plans to build a data center across two uh, cities. Uh, the energy company Fortune plan to invest uh, the waste heat, and this is going to be the world's largest uh, data center heat recovery initiative, uh, expecting to provide 40% uh, district heating for both cities and uh, cut uh, CO2 emission by uh, 400,000 tons. Despite uh, applications, the, uh, this is a, a typical uh, design of uh, data center with heat to uh, district uh, heating. It's also applicable to uh, nearby building heatings. Uh, here, you can see that um, the uh, heat pumps are commonly used to cool data center from 15 degree to 10 degree on one hand, um, and uh, to heat the waste heat to supply to the return line on the other hand. So. Despite, uh, despite the applications, uh, technical uh, challenges exist. First, uh, the data center's energy density grow dramatically up to 100% growth in average server rack, as shown in the left graph. Uh, therefore, uh, liquid cooling, especially direct to cheap cooling, are expanding now. Uh, with uh, big, with very high uh, growth rate, also uh, as shown in this uh, in the uh, right hand side graph. Uh, second, most data center waste heat recovery method depend on heat pumps that can consume significant electricity and also very cost. Translating these uh, uh, technical challenges into research gaps, uh, we can conclude that uh, limited research exists on passive data center waste heat recovery without heat pumps. Um, two I... <laughs> Sorry. There is um, just this. Okay. It's okay now. Okay. Two critical uh, research issues can be uh, summarized. First, can this heat from a liquid cooling system be fully recovered with just heat exchanger without heat pump? Second, 
limited CDU research has focused on primary site waste heat recovery only. Secondary site recovery has been completely neglected. Uh, CDU here represent coolant distribution unit or cooling distribution unit that distribute water or coolant in the liquid cooling system. Uh, to solve these uh, problems, uh, we introduce a new concept called data furnished through direct to cheap cooling. Uh, the concept is illustrated in the graph on the right hand side that involve uh, placing distributed or edge data center with a few racks as a data furnace within or near building digital heating substations. Uh, here you can see that uh, a few racks uh, can directly heat the buildings as a heat, as a data furnace. And this way, piping cost and heat loss can be minimized within the building. Uh, I want to emphasize that one of the aims of our invention is to simplify piping engineering work at a very low cost. Okay, uh, now I showcase uh, the, our invention using real data center. Uh, this data center called WSTAR data center. Uh, it is an edge or distributed data center located at our university in the western part of Finland with IT capacity 50 kilowatts, including 30 kilowatts liquid cooling or direct to cheap cooling. Uh, the heated building is an office building that has about 3,000 square meters floor area heated by district heating. Um, the heating demand is about uh, square meter per square meter is 96 kilowatt hour. I demonstrate our solution for WSTAR data center using four cases. The first is direct to cheap cooling system without heat recovery. And the second is building space heating network without heat recovery. And these two cases are served as base case. Now I propose two liquid to liquid heat exchanger schemes to recover waste heat from primary or secondary side of uh, CDU. Now I compare the performances. So this is the first case, uh, standard direct to cheap cooling system as a base case. Uh, the middle uh, square represents the CDU uh, heat exchanger. Uh, the, uh, we, because, uh, because we want to be uh, at low cost, so we assume the effectiveness of this uh, heat exchanger is 0.7. So this is an average among commonly used heat exchanger. So this CDU pool, the reg, uh, on the secondary side and the uh, interface dry cooler on the primary side. And this is the uh, standard uh, building space heating network. TC, uh, here, TC represent control center that adjust this uh, TV1 to regulate digital heating flow through this heat exchanger HX, HX1 to supply water temperature at the temperature TE1 according to the control curve shown here or on the, on the uh, uh, right, right side. So the temp supply temperature about 45 to 20 degree. And um, I, I want to mention that this supply temperature are the regulations in Finland, uh, which could be 20 degrees lower than those in many European countries. Um, also, I would like to mention that uh, this application is not just limited to district heating. 
uh, it could be because here I did John completely. It could be, for example, boiler heated building as a, as commonly used in the UK. And uh, this is the our invention scheme one that recover waste heat on the secondary side. Uh, it can achieve 100% waste heat recovery. Uh, the lower uh, section represents direct to cheap cooling system, and the upper section represents uh, uh, spa building space heating. The middle, the middle square uh, represents our proposed heat exchanger that recover waste heat from the secondary side of CDU uh, at the to serve the temperature to the space heating at the, at the temperature TE1, according to the regulated uh, uh, control curve that I showed in previous uh, uh, slide that uh, it is based on the fin Finland Finnish uh, regulation. Um, the, the control, the whole system control it can be realized by two processes. First is TC, the, this TC. Uh, this TC regulate uh, waste heat flow uh, here on the secondary side uh, through, uh, through heat exchanger HX2 uh, to uh, supply the temperature at TE1 according to the Finnish regulation. If the waste heat is not enough, then this TC will activate TV1 that uh, utilize DC heating or some other source heat to serve the temperature at TE1 according to the Finnish regulation. This is a so this process can be viewed as autonomous or independent waste heat reuse loop. The other control uh, process is through this EIA. And this, 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 this EIA can usually it is shut down. It is uh, activated if and only if uh, the outlet temperature of heat exchanger uh, exceed 41 degree then this EIA will activate the pump here and dry cooler that so. So they only if and only if that. Uh, most of the time, uh, normally this primary side, dry cooler and uh, pump are shut down. So this process, uh, this is for emergency use only and this can be viewed as waste heat rejection loop. Um, and uh, because it's uh, most of the time shut down, it saves huge electricity for dry cooler and the pump. Um, I would like to also mention that the scheme one uh, separate the waste heat loop and the uh, uh, waste heat rejection loop completely. And this is the, our invention scheme two that recover waste heat uh, from the primary side. And about 83% waste heat can be recovered. Uh, the design is completely uh, quite similar as the first one, except that um, in the middle, uh, you can see that the, the heat, rec uh, heat changer recovered the heat, waste heat from primary side instead of secondary side. So that's the uh, only difference. Uh, the control process are the same as scheme one, but there is a very, very big difference. I, I think you can discover that uh, the dry cooler and the pump in the primary side must be run all the time. So this is a result. Uh, scheme one uh, can utilize this heat about 150 megawatt hour, uh, equivalent to 
71% annual waste heat. Uh, additionally, it can save about 2,291 kilowatt hour electricity for dry cooler and the pump uh, on the primary side. Uh, the corresponding values are a bit lower uh, in scheme two. Um, we also develop um, a new relationship graph based on the two um, schemes because linear color, uh, coloration can be found among this uh, waste heat uh, reuse rate, order temperature, as well as uh, uh, heating, uh, space heating supply temperature. Therefore, this graph can be used uh, to uh, to aid in designing heat recovery system or HX2. And uh, there are some new uh, discoveries can be found from the graph. Uh, first, uh, scheme one uh, keeps constantly uh, complete waste heat recovery uh, out uh, performing scheme two. Uh, scheme two is this, this blue, blue line. And uh, in scheme two, uh, the waste heat recovery decreases as outdoor temperature drops. Second, uh, and this uh, second, this is very interesting because we discover that the slope of the line actually represent the effectiveness of the heat exchanger, with optimal slope being zero degree as the horizontal line of scheme one. Uh, improving the effectiveness of heat exchanger in scheme two, for example, uh, by lifting or lifting this uh, blue line up can narrow the performance gap between scheme one and scheme two, but the gap can never be eliminated due to the um, connection differences. In the ideal case, as shown in the uh, horizontal line for scheme one, uh, the graph should show no coloration between waste heat recovery rate and outdoor temperature, indicating complete recovery. So these um, uh, new discoveries uh, can be used to help design and plan energy efficient uh, heat exchanges. So you can adjust it, the effectiveness. Okay, the last session, the last session we conducted life cycle cost uh, from a uh, building owner's perspective, because uh, there, there are many uh, stakeholders involved. So our um, life cycle, uh, analysis is conducted from building owner's perspective. Uh, these uh, prices um, are, are, are taken as average or above average values uh, based from, uh, on online uh, sources. For example, uh, the installation cost typically 15% uh, of the investment based on literature review uh, we consider as 50%. Uh, the piping cost is uh, 70 euro per meter, and uh, we consider 50 meters. And also, uh, I would like to mention that uh, we, because this is uh, the pipe work is within a building, it's uh, simple. Because there is no heat pumps, uh, and all pipes are installed within the building, so the investment cost is uh, greatly reduced under 10,000 euros. And this is a um, uh, life cycle cost for carbon emission uh, based on the following input parameters. Uh, for 25 years, this uh, discount rate 7%, inflation 2%, Electricity price for the first year, 
121 euros megawatt per megawatt hour, electricity inflation rate 2%, and the digital heating price for the first year, about 90 euros per megawatt hour is inflation rate 3%. The CO2 emission factor are uh, 89 gram CO2 per kilowatt hour for electricity and uh, 160 gram CO2 emission per kilowatt hour for digital heating. And these emission factors are based on the data in Finland or, fin or Finnish situation which I think that may be much lower compared to other European countries. Because Finnish, this, uh, in Finland, this uh, electricity is quite clean. Both schemes have payback time less than one year and contribute significantly to carbon reduction. Uh, scheme one saves over 200,000 euro uh, energy and uh, nearly 300,000 kilos uh, CO2 in digital heating cost over 25 years. Uh, the corresponding values are a bit lower uh, in scheme two. Anyway, nevertheless, both uh, um, solutions achieve very good results with 54% for scheme one and 48% for scheme two compared uh, with the uh, base case. Also, I would like to remind you that these are observed uh, based on a very small single uh, rack, 25 only kilowatts waste heat and in the cold weather in Finland. Um, Discussion and conclusions. Uh, this, uh, this discussion, this is uh, quite interesting because initially we thought that full uh, complete recovery of this heat from data center uh, could be achieved if building heating demand exceed this heat. But result show very different reality uh, because you, we, you remember that the, the, the graph I showed earlier, uh, the scheme of, uh, two was, uh, is represented by uh, in this blue line. And uh, in scheme two, uh, the waste heat recovery uh, drops as outdoor temperature drop, meaning that uh, building heating demand increases because of the temperature drops. So this is not true. What we thought in the beginning was not true. Uh, conversely, uh, scheme one avoid this complicated issue that keeps a constant waste heat recovery rate uh, independent of outdoor temperature. And this crucial fi uh, finding uh, represents a new insight. Um, for direct to cheap cooling system and low temperature space heating, our developed uh, method scheme one and scheme two uh, can uh, both can achieve very good result. I think it's one is 100% uh, and the other is 83% recovery, corresponding to 71% uh, and 63% annual recovery. Um, here I show a reference from the existing literature published in 2020. Because uh, uh, capacities are different, direct comparison is not straightforward. Uh, nevertheless, uh, you can use it as a reference. So this is a, a more simulation uh, result. Uh, based to waste heat reuse concept based on university-based data center with IT capacity 360 kilowatts. Um, one method is to is using 
dispensed heat to the campus digital heating system, and the other one is to heat nearby buildings. Their recoveries are 50% and 20% uh, respectively. Utilizing waste heat from liquid cooling system without heat pump is highly profitable for space heating. Uh, regardless of recovering waste heat from primary or secondary site. And our uh, solution shows that the payback time is less than one year. And uh, our result outcome, uh, the state of art uh, existing, for example, the existing uh, literature uh, published in 2019 for um, a thousand kilowatts air cool data center analysis with two cooling method. Um, the their uh, payback periods are uh, ten to fourteen years and fifteen years, uh, respectively, uh, significantly or much longer than our result. Here are some uh, final takeaways. Uh, summarize our solution. So our solutions can achieve complete waste heat recovery in extreme cold weather. Uh, there is no need for heat pumps. Uh, the cost effective uh, in, uh, investment uh, very low, limited to uh, heating pipes and heat exchanges only. And uh, the uh, the solution can be applied beyond digital heating, particularly beneficial for fourth generation and fifth generation digital heating, especially suitable for low temperature heating systems. And um, our method achieve a rapid carbon reduction with quick payback time less than a year. And uh, I, we can conclude that uh, our uh, my, uh, method present an affordable, sustainable, and innovative approach to waste heat recovery in data centers. Okay, and uh, this appendix contains some detailed information on the uh, WSTAR data center use case, and uh, we are currently uh, procuring equipment with completion in 2025. And this is the office building that uh, where the data center will be located. And these are PVs. And co collaboration for joint uh, project applications are welcome. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and happy Valentine's Day. And I'm happy to answer or discuss any questions you may, you may have. Many, many thanks. That's a very <coughs> exciting uh, research and a really innovative and applied um, piece of work. We have a question and answer time. Uh, 20 minutes. And before we go to uh, so question answers, please feel free to tap in any questions you might have in the chat area. So we'll try to answer your questions later on. So I'll tap one thing in the chat area, probably you can see, tap your question there. <clears throat> Sorry. Feel free to tap your questions. Or if you like to raise your hand, if you like to ask question uh, in person, that would be great. And also later on, we'll publish this recording on CPC website, also on uh, LinkedIn uh, Intelligent Building Group uh, page. So I just posted a link to the Intelligent Building Group. And somebody got yeah. Yeah. Is Tongdi Aloy, is that correct? Can you just ask a question, please? Hi, Tunelai from Grant. Um, great presentation. Just wanted to ask a question about 
a comment you made there about heat recovery from the data centers doesn't need heat pumps. On a typical 3G network, obviously flow temperatures are going to be 65 plus. How do you envisage we can recover heat into those type of networks at such high flow and return temperatures without a heat pump? Uh, it depends on the uh, you know, ret return temperature. Uh, if it's, uh, I, I didn't catch, you said that uh, the supply temperature, the, the so flow the temperature, temperature is 65. 65, yeah. Yeah, that's very high, I think. Um, yeah. I, yeah. In Finland, as I showed to you, that uh, the uh, the uh, second the secondary return uh, recovery uh, secondary side in digital heating uh, or space heating, whatever, is a uh, sixty four five and thirty degrees. So it's pl plenty of uh, uh, over twenty degree more. Uh, in practice, I think no problem. You can, I think you can fully recover that uh, with heat. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but even can I comment? Even if uh, not in Finland, because in Finland that uh, is uh, well well insulated, and uh, mm. uh, the the regulation, uh, I mean that aims for low uh, temperature supply supply temperature. But uh, I think that uh, normally that um, the regulated or the the temp the supply temperature based on regulation it bit a little bit usually a bit higher. So even if for the old regulation, it's, I think it still works, if, if not recover fully. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, Stephen, uh, Stephen Parker, please. Thank you. Uh, hi, hi there. Um, I'm a data center designer um, and uh, I've got a question about the, you said that your analysis was designed on a direct chip liquid cooling for a yeah. 25 kilowatt rack. Yeah. Um, obviously data centers that I design, a 25 kilowatt rack is still uh, just a single rack. Um, we mm -hmm. have hundreds of racks per data, data hall. Um, but the direct chip obviously doesn't provide 100% cooling to the liquid um it actually only provides 25 to 30 percent uh oh, sorry it still requires 25 to 30 percent air cooling with the remaining going to the liquid how's that been accounted for in your research uh, you mean this air cool, cool uh this uh that that part yeah so, so the direct is... chip direct chip technology relies on putting a cold plate on the chip but the power supply, the RAM, and the other components within the servers still require air cooling. You mean the cooling? Well, it, for example, in our um, uh, uh, this use case data center, we we have this mixed cooling method, both for uh, liquid cooling and also uh, air cooled. Uh, uh, I don't get your um, uh, your question. Why you can't use uh, direct to cheap cooling? Why you have to Good. use air cool? Yeah, we, we do use direct to chip cooling, but direct yes. to chip cooling of a twenty five kilowatt rack direct to chip cooling will only remove seventy five percent, eighteen nineteen kilowatts of that heat. The other six seven kilowatts will need to be removed by air cooling. Direct to chip cannot take all of the heat out of a uh, server. Yes, 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 that's true. That's true. Uh, uh, it was a question of whether that's being taken into account into the research. In the air court data set, uh, the, uh, no, we didn't consider this uh, air court uh, data center heat recovery. We, de we didn't con consider that for this heat recovery. But if you talk about cooling, um, yes. Or what about the immersion cooling? If, immersion. Uh, direct to, yeah, if direct to cheap cooling cannot complete this uh, cooling po uh, power. Or two phase, yes. yeah. Yeah, two phase immersion and single phase immersion are viable alternatives that will extract 100% of the heat. 
However, yes. there are concerns over the chemical use and the equipment lifetime in a in a immersion cooled server. This is why they're not yet widely adopted in data in data centers. But I, I heard that uh, this uh, 3M or, or that company they they uh, they they said they pro they said that they promised that uh, the they have no chemical problem uh, or, or for the let's say that for the air or emission problem. And uh, I heard that they have these two fa uh, phase uh, that uh, new method that can serve uh, very well. Of course, it's expensive. Um, yeah, as far as I'm aware, three M actually stopped producing uh, two phase liquid um, earlier. Uh, oh, sorry, at the end of last year, they famously launched a press release on it. Yeah. Okay, I understand. Because our work uh, is uh, focused on mainly uh, waste heat recovery, uh, we haven't really considered this uh, um, uh, air-cooled uh, system. But I don't know in UK, in Finland, this air-cooled uh, system can reach the temperature about forty-five degree. Uh, it can be maybe you can it can be also. Used in uh, floor heating buildings. No, uh, 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 don't take me wrong. I'm not. I'm not meant to to to, uh, to be negative to the research. It's good research, and actually, we're adopting a very similar um, yeah, approach to yeah, yeah. The, to I, the I, export I, from our own data centers. In fact, we're looking yeah. at a 20 megawatt heat rejection to a local heat network using yeah, just yeah. a plate heat exchanger. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. absolutely the right thing to do. But I, I yes, would just indeed. say that. There needs to be a lot more detail added, and but I'm happy to facilitate that and get that message across to other data centers. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, very good question, excellent answers. We have three questions on the chat area. Professor Lu, probably you can see the chat area. The first question is uh, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, I'm I'll, I'll read it out. What type of heating system have been considered for the building? So it's yeah for the building for heating. Is that what you're asking? Uh, talking about if we talk about the waste heat recovery, any heating system, mm. anyone can be utilized. Uh, the only requirement is the return temperature. Uh, can uh, should be uh let's say because our this uh, supply temperature about sixty. So so in practical point of view, it should be maybe 20 de degree lower. Or oh, in theory, 10 degree, okay. But uh, I mean, let's do, if we talk about practical things, you know, you never know this 10 degree. So uh, it should be 45, 40 degree, okay. So any uh, heating system, build that and work around heat recovery for air cooled rack. And I'll show you it. Uh, I haven't done, I just know I mentioned to the previous um, answer, I haven't done the air cooled um, mm. recovery seat, but I don't see the difference. The only, uh, the, the, only pro, uh, the only challenge is that the air cooled uh, work, the supply temperature is lower, but you can perhaps you can use to uh, lower uh, heating system such as Let's say that the floor heating, um, floor heating uh, buildings, uh, that maybe thirty degree is okay, uh, or maybe ventilation system. But I think in principle, it's the same. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, next question is is from David Bassett. I think similar to Stephen's question. Uh, have you done any work around heat recovery from air cooled only uh, racks and uh, associated UPS supporting those racks? No, 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 no. Yeah. But I think that I mentioned that uh, in principle, uh, the, the I don't see the difference. It's only that mm. the air cooled uh, system comes uh, be lower temperature, but you can use uh, in the lower heating system like floor heating buildings so or maybe ventilation system 
it it it, it has lower temperature, so there is no difference. The next uh, question is from uh, Lacos. Uh, what are the recovered temperature in your system? In, in the liquid uh, liquid system, it's a sixty degree. Sixty degree. Hmm. Oh. Okay. And but uh, but it's different in a secondary recovery system. It's about in the scheme one, it is six degree. But in the pri if you recover from primary system, it's a fifty something. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I think that is the old question we have in the chat area. As you mentioned, uh, East Finland and UK, we might have different uh, insulation and regulation on heating systems. So there's a public consultation uh, on district heating. So uh, feel free to uh, uh, response. So we'll post that uh, consultation in the entire building group if you're interested. Mm -hmm. But uh, I have one. I have one interesting question for you for for UK. But <laughs> because you you normally you use boiler to heat the building. Yeah. What is the what is the return temperature? Uh, if you use uh, boiler. Ah, I, yeah. anyone anyone um, typically in UK, in UK. Yeah, we normally flow and return and peak winter about 70 and then coming back, you know, it's 60. We're trying to push down to, you know, 75, 55 on newer buildings. Uh, oh, older buildings okay. can be 80, 70 sometimes. So it varies on boiler design. We're not very good wow. technically about managing delta T's across building. So oh, okay. it's um, it's quite varied depending on which building you go to. But we are trying to push for condensing boilers to be lower. And then with heat pumps, obviously that's dropping a bit further. Oh, OK, OK, thank you. So it's much high, higher than finish than the, the return temperature in Finland. Yeah. Uh, you'll be monitoring some radiator temperature in some buildings. It's really varied uh, depending on different room insulation conditions. It's very wide. Sometimes probably uh, sometimes forty five to uh, sixty five. So it's quite uh, different uh, in different uh, settings. But uh, thank you. Next question: uh, Will the attendee list be shared? I don't think uh, uh, Dundee that will be shared. I don't have the list. I can ask the uh, uh, CPC, uh, but usually we don't share the attendees list. Uh, feel free to uh, post uh, any event. So if you like to promote through our social media LinkedIn web page, so I uh, post that in the uh, chat area later on. Next question: What is the practical distance over which it is possible to export the heat before capex begins to become too high? What do you mean? This practical distance? Is it physical distance? Yeah. Do you want to clarify? Uh, yeah. Your rampo, Mohammed. What do you mean by practical distance? Uh, I can I can answer this way because the okay. the ma the major the major uh cost is this piping. I think heat mm. exchangers are not very expensive, so that's why we propose that uh, this uh, uh, uh that we we propose that these uh, uh racks are. But not very far from the uh, these uh, buildings, but uh, in Finland, uh, it's a per, uh, per meter cost uh, seventy euros. So then you can calculate that. I think that it can be very, if it's very very far uh, for stand alone data center, then our method doesn't work for that because it's too expensive. Uh. Austin, uh, uh, I saw your raised hand. Do you like to ask a question in person, please? Uh, you have to unmute yourself first, please. Austin Williams. Yeah. Austin Williamson. Yep. <clears throat> That's going to be a bit of feedback. Apologies. Uh, thanks for the presentation. 
Has any consideration been given to the size of the distribution pipe work and the terminations to the DH substation? This particularly relates to the larger data center buildings. Uh, this, uh, think, sorry. sorry. Oh, carry on, the, apologies. Yeah, sorry. Uh, this our, I think I mentioned that uh, this our work. One one of this uh, invent uh, this uh, innovate innovation is this pipe work. It's very simple. It's just uh, because for the substation building, you just link to the secondary side. Uh, it is very simple. But uh, if it's a very big uh, data center, uh, I don't think it's uh, depend on the size of the data center, but the distance to the uh, this uh, uh, space heating. Uh, to yes, space heat. Yeah, yeah. If it's a uh, very very long, very far, then it doesn't work because the piping, as you 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 can imagine, is a uh, too complicated and expensive. Yes. Okay. I, I was just making the point in relation to the real estate of the uh, and getting the pipe work out of the main data halls. But yes, thank you very much for that. Uh, yeah. For that response. Yeah, oh, so thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions? Uh, I saw uh, uh, this question about the slide deck be shared with attendees. Uh, we will uh, publish the recorded vi uh, video. Whether the presentation slides will depending on Professor Lu, whether you would like to share or or pre. I'll, I'll ask Professor Lu if you'd like to share or not later on. Yeah. Okay, any other questions, guys? Okay, you can start distributing and you can focus on low heat. You're looking for a partner. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know that in the, some, in the audience, there they are some district heating kind of. Uh, broker, <laughs> not probably direct supplier, but uh, they they might be able to help. Yeah. And I, I also want to uh, mention that this is a passive um, uh, heat recovery. So, mm. yes, it's not the, yeah. Right, OK, so uh, yeah, Golden replied, that's great. So I'm uh, happy to hear more from you, uh, Golden. OK, many, many thanks. I think that is wonderful and uh, look forward to see you guys again. Thank Just you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.